Previously on AgentPalmer.com, how to make a difference, a review of Alan Jennings' The Pursuit of Fairness, a look into how a collectible card game gave me an appreciation for Twitch, and Chris and I are still looking to work on that next, next big thing for us. This is The Palmer Files, episode 27 with my friend Bill Sweeney. This is the third of our four episodes discussing friendship by examining one up close. Are you ready? Let's do the show. Hello and welcome to the Palmer Files. I'm your host, Jason Sturchik, also known as Agent Palmer, and on this 27th episode is the third of four episodes about friendship, continuing with a friend from the internet. In life, we don't listen blankly to someone else making a speech with no thoughts in our head, simply waiting for them to stop so that we can say our piece. And we don't interrupt every time we have an interesting thought, or if we do we won't end up with many friends. That quote comes from Michael Caine's third autobiography, Blowing the Bloody Doors Off, which fits well for my friend and guest of honor, Bill Sweeney. It's not that we interrupt each other, it's that we tend to talk over each other, which is actually just a nice way of saying we interrupt each other. Well, you'll get the idea as this episode rolls on. What you are about to hear is simple and yet complex. The episode and the others like it all contain four main questions. Why are we friends? How did we meet? How did we become friends? Why are we still friends? Through the answers to those questions, the discussions, and the stories that ensue, Bill and I will dive deep into our shared past and the meaning of, and perhaps reason for, our friendship. Before we get into it, remember that if you want to discuss the episode as you listen or after, you can tweet me at Agent Palmer, you can tweet the show at The Palmer Files, and you can tweet Bill at Wicked Theory, or check out his endeavors of both the audio and written kind on wickedtheory.com. Email can be sent to the show at thepalmerfiles at gmail.com, and don't forget you can see all of my writings and rantings on agentpalmer.com. So without further ado, let's get into it. Bill, why are we friends? Oh, you're just going to jump in. <laughs> I have no idea, man. We met and we decided, I guess, without officially deciding that uh, we don't dislike each other. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, it's an odd question now that I think about it. Like, you're, It's like a... Am I supposed to kind of like knuckle down, get granular, and say uh, we have uh, s- similar enough uh, views on the world and the things that we're into? I guess that I think that's what it comes down to. Maybe in a way, if you think if you want to really analyze friends and like how friendship works, like it's it's not only is it a loaded question, but for you, it's more of a loaded question than the previous two guests, right? Zapata, mm. I knew in high school, like you make friends in high school because you're in high school. Like, otherwise you're going to be, have a lonely existence mm. in college. I, I met Chris. So you make friends in college again. It's shit like, but you and I, how we meet and we'll get to it. We meet later in life, right? Like yeah. I'm not at, at the point when we meet, we, neither, I don't think either of us is looking for more friends, which is why this becomes a little more different than others because i'll well, be the first to admit i thought i had all the friends like before i met you and and the entire circle like i thought i had all the friends i not that i needed but like i thought i no, had all my but friends like yeah you, you don't expect that you're gonna make new friends that like last yeah in a way like you know what i mean oh you make new acquaintances or whatever but i, I look i I had like two thoughts uh, while you were talking. Um, and I think it does go to the mechanic of why friendships work. And like there's acquaintances, right? Like yeah. there's people you meet in college, but there's only a couple that like, or like 
the friends that you like to hang out with or be around or talk to or like they're not the people that you just like put up with or just kind of know like you seek them out you're like i dig something about that person they're tuned into my frequency so it's like i get a kick out of talking to them or you know whatever it may be yeah you know sub- subconsciously even of like why they kind of appeal to you you know what i mean but i will say that oh, this is the second thing <laughs> i will say that for me the problem for people who want to be my friend is that i'm bad at being like the friend who stays in touch on like <laughs> any level. And, cause it's like, cause it's like all the friends I don't talk to, if they came around and just called me like, yeah, we would probably hang out all the time. Like it's, it's, it's a really messed up one sided kind of friendship in a little bit of a way. Like how often do I call you? Let's put that out. Right. right so you, cause call- you know, we're going to go with the other number, right? Yeah. So let's just make up like a, some you, kind of random ca- I, structure I, I, of a, of a measure. So you call me, um, we're not talking returning calls, right? We're not talking like, Oh, I called you and you missed the call and called, we're not calling that. We're talking like you called me unprompted. Right. I would say it's whenever I go dark. Like if, if, if you don't hear from me for like a, a 10 days, two weeks, right. then you'll call me. Yeah. I'd be um, like, are you okay? Because of what, I, how often <laughs> you call me. Right. So this is what I'm getting to. Oh, so it, like so for, the benefit, the, for yeah. the benefit of the listener, like it's, I don't call you every week. I certainly, I, you can't say every month, but in a month you might get one call. Yes. But you could go several months before I, I call you at all because, like you said, once I haven't heard from you, then I'm like, oh, what's up with this guy? Is he okay, A or B? Did I maybe piss him off? Or, like, I should probably just check in because this person calls me all the time. <laughs> so, but it's it's similar with, with Ed. Ed's the only friend, and you are the only two friends I have that call me on a regular basis. Like he doesn't call me every day and neither do you anymore. <laughs> yeah. We'll but there get was to a that. daily. We'll, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll get to the daily check-ins. Yes. Okay. Um, but, uh, as far as like how the, it works in the, in the friendship, you know, mechanic, uh, of this, of these friendships, uh, that's how that plays out. So like you may have conversely, you know, called me several, many times a month, and at this point, we're to a point where, like, you actually call me like a, f- a few times a week. Yeah, every every couple of days. It's actually, or so, it I is it is definitely pared down from what we're about to get into. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny, you know, is that how like because you're not. It, it's a testament to how unannoying you must be, at least to me, because I can't imagine besides you or Ed or maybe a couple of people in my life, people that I know that are friends, if they were calling me as often as you used to fucking call me, <laughs> like it would have dri- driven me crazy. I mean, let's, uh, so it we kind of did. It, we yeah. will get there in the timeline, like okay. down, but okay. but for just to state to it right on, now, to get back on topic. No, okay. no, before 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 we get mm-hmm. there, before we get back on topic, I just want to say yes. At a certain point, like at the height, it was multiple times a day. On average, multiple times a day. That was yeah. the that yes. was what it was. Um, Minimum two calls. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, where you'd pick up? I mean, that's yeah. What was? It's all on me then, right? That it's my fault. Well, <laughs> <laughs> right. Could go Is that what you way. say? Yeah, it's Could go, it depends on how you look at yeah. it, right? All right. So let's go into how did we meet? Uh, through the joys of the internet, uh, the, the the power of Twitter. The one decent thing, well, there's a, there's a few. I was going to say it's the one good thing Twitter's ever done for me, but that's not true. I mean, I, did, I have made some other friends and uh, yes. had some good experiences that came out of it, all you know, related to the podcast circle that we found ourselves at first on the fringe of and then somehow in the middle of. Yeah, we, we <laughs> like if if we were – typical wallflowers like we mm-hmm. tend to be like we do like w- while you're not podcasting right now and and i am but you did have a podcast we aren't those hey look at me pe-. we very much are the wallflowers we are those f- f- like people oh i'm a-, a fucking hermit i'm not even a wallflower well, neither, 
Okay, fine, but at like, a, I'm the salamander under the rock, like you know. So but go on. I'm sorry. Well, st- again, so for the most part, so am I, right? Like, <laughs> okay. they, but but I'm saying, like, in a social scenario, we are the wallflowers. Like, we're not going to mm. be in the center of attention. And I've been thinking about this. I think, and this puts a very fine point on it. But I do believe that your the first substantial Twitter interaction we had was after your guest spot on the stranger conversations with grant markham i believe so i mean we were both kind of around grant in the seven days of geek circle but i feel like at the time i was live tweeting to the tune of like five or 12 or 15 or 20 tweets per episode yes that was your that was your mo you would listen to shows and then like just comment as if we were all in the room with you yes exactly (laughs) and i so this is where it gets really fuzzy is um, see, I, I wouldn't but, be surprised if we had a, like one into, I feel like when, like wherever it is you want to kind of go to, I feel like there was one or two interactions maybe beforehand where at the very least you might've commented on something. Cause I think it kind of goes where I had started listening to seven dag or following seven dag at the very least. And I think that's how Grant kind of found me. And it might have been a couple interactions with Grant, like like the setting up of me being on Stranger Conversations. And you might have been chiming in on that as just kind of because you you knew of Grant and was you were following Grant because you listened to Seven Dag at the time, Seven Days a Geek podcast with Jay and Grant, amongst others. I, and I so so I kind of feel like there was a point where I was like, oh, who's this guy chiming in? <laughs> <laughs> and like, I was like, oh, it's that Andrew Palmer guy. Like he's, I think you were like sending emails maybe already or something I, or it's all, or it's all so like within like a three week period that it's it, well, or something. They were, they were doing live shows still or at that point. And it was one of those things where the first few live shows where I was in the chat, um, and I, I have since listened back to seven dag, but like mm-hmm. those two grant and Jay never, never picked on somebody like never saw a target so juicy as me <laughs> in the chat. Like, like I, and I challenge, I mean, I, I'm not going to challenge everybody, but like, if you want, listen to like the 25 episodes uh, right before episode one, go from 75 yes, on and listen, yes. because this it, is all coming back to in you hindsight. Then. It's a, like, I didn't you want to, you want to know what your persona was to me <laughs> at that time. Yeah, it's all coming back to me. Now yeah. you were like the, like the uh, annoying is not the right word. Cause you weren't mm-hmm. annoying, but you were like a chatty Kathy kind of fan. That's what it seemed like to me. That's the vibe I had gotten in the very beginning, I think. I think I had heard your name get mentioned on the show somewhere within this narrow window sure. of time. And it was like fucking Grant yeah. being like, and this guy, and this Agent Palmer, god damn it. <sighs> or something semi-exasperated. But then immediately it was like I didn't know what was bit and what wasn't on that show yet. I had just started kind of checking it out. Sure. So I didn't know how much of Grant was like maybe him just kind of like uh, goofing on this guy, but playing it completely straight. Like, you know, I didn't know what the vibe was of the show. You know, I didn't know that not like 90% of the time Grant is, or I'll say 95, 90, some number like that. I, I'm, I'm imagining him listening to this and telling me I'm wrong on that number. <laughs> that's what that's just happened in my head. <clears throat> but I kind of feel like it was a thing where like, Oh, so he's like the fan that's like kind of like wants to be in the middle and like got like started kind of like getting into the mix like too fast and and too verbosely like, you know, and so it's kind of like irked these guys a little bit where it was like maybe they weren't ready for like a a fan like you who was going to be like sending emails and then also in the chat room and then also like live tweeting and then also like asking like, hey, what's up? You need somebody to help out? You know what I mean? And then like. Well, that was, but, but it wasn't at that point, there wasn't uh Hey, let's let, let me help you out like that. That doesn't happen early on. No, no. You're and right. then but I couldn't think of another thing, but cause, but it is a th- scenario where like, so, so we're in this, I'm going to call this, this nebulous kind of connection for now. Right. Cause right. that then you and I start tweeting 
um, after your Stranger Cons episode. Mm. And again, and it's funny at the time, my Twitter handle is Agent Palmer, but my name is still Agent Palmer. Like I hadn't gone with who I really am. Yet. Yes, that's right. You were you were doubling down. Um, and it wasn't until my Stranger Cons episode that anybody hears anybody from the internet from that era hears that my real name is Jason at all. Right. And then and that you're not actually a spy. But we, you fast forward cuz from that moment it's only like a four or five mo- it's less than half a year before the idea for the first Podtoberfest happens and you and I this is where we somehow get sucked into the middle. Right. Because I look look I remember well, being here. Is- do, yeah. you re- do you remember more? Because I remember being there and then I remember being like, sure, I'll help out. And after that point, it's a blur to when it's just like, I'm calling you and like, Bill, we don't have segments. What do we do now? Well, here's the <laughs> thing that you kind of uh, might be jumping over is that you became the guy who was willing to do like – uh, not the grunt work, but like producer ish kind of like, do you want me to take minutes? Uh, do you need someone like, like you were already without, without offering a producer position ish kind of like interest or anything like that. You were already like helpful Harry, but that- we were calling, cause we were calling you Harry Palmer and it was like helpful. Harry was a thing too. You were always offering. Cause I feel like when the whole thing happened where it was like, Oh, Let's do a pod tour fest thing and let's include some people. This is Jay and Grant. And then once, you know, um, it seemed also too, maybe even in, in those meetings, you had, you know, just helpful eagerness to take on a certain amount of work. And I think what, what it was for me in my head was that like, like I could see how to structure it a little bit, I thought. And also I think what it kind of went down is I like, for lack of a better terms for both of us, like I'm the creative and you're the taskmaster in a way like, or not taskmaster, but like, you know, the guy who will take my jumbled up thoughts and then be like, let me bounce them off you or whatever, this kind of thing. And so as far as like how we worked together, I think it worked together well because I don't have resistance conversationally with you. It turns out in those creative back and forths, that's, like, yeah, no, that's fair. Like, you don't have to finish a thought, and I can still get to the end of your thought. Well, that, and I, I just mean, like, and maybe it's a personality thing for me versus, like, Grant and Jay, but it also felt to me like they, and it was because it was their show, so they wanted to maybe have more control of the ideas or whatever, whatever the instinct is. I'm not saying that they were like maniacal in any way. I just mean like, you know, sure. you would, it seemed to me like you would throw out ideas and get a little bit more pushback or bump up against it from them. Oh no. Like I, <laughs> and, and I think I did too a little bit, but not as much as you, not, no, it was like, like cause, cause in, in <laughs> in hard, dude, times it, it seemed like, it, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay. In, in, right. In, yes. In, obviously Palmer, we have, we know we have to do X, Y, and Z. Okay. And well, it's like, for me, I would have just been like, okay, right. Sure. Yes. No, the because next thing. in, in hindsight, I remember it taking me about two meetings to be like, Bill needs to pitch everything. Like, cause for whatever reason, like at that time, if I said something and then you said something, they would be like, let's go with Bill's idea. And I would be like, that's what I just said. Well, I don't, well, you know, like that, not to toot, no, not it's to toot my own horn. I don't know. Not to, toot my, not to toot my own horn. But I think the thing is that like a lot of the stuff maybe you were throwing in, would be like structurally sound, but it may not have been like dialed in all the way, you know, where a lot of the stuff that would come out of my head is just, it's for that, whatever it is for, for their personal tastes or for what we were doing. I was a little more automatically dialed in. So like you would come, we could both come with the same idea, but I think the thing is that like my idea was going to have that next little piece that, if you had pitched it, they'd be like, okay, but it needs something else. Yeah, that's fair. I, I, I was, it's hard for me to kind of like put my head around it. You, you, you would sit there and be like, let's do top 10 list. 
I would pitch a top 10 list. Yeah. Okay. That, you know what I mean? Not to con- not just the concept, but I would also be like, we should do a top 10 list of all the, um, failed Batman gadgets. Like, you know what I mean? Or something like that, where you'd be like, let's do top 10 lists. And so to these guys or to anybody, it's like, you know, all right. Yeah, sure. Top 10 lists, you know? Yeah. And that's just cause I've gotten used to like the creative pitch meeting thing a little bit more. Well, what's funny is all of this is happening. Remember in that first Podtoberfest. And at this point, I'm not going to say we're friends yet. Oh, sure. Way to be on topic, by the way. Good, good, (laughs) good of you to bring it back. But we, we know each other. We're, Mm -hmm. we're at, at at a certain point, um, especially because you and I have, uh, schedules that lined up, you know, Jay and Grant weren't necessarily working nine to fives, but they also have kids and families. So you and I that are working nine to fives at that point are just like, well, it's seven o'clock and I, I, I can, we can work on this. Like we can do this. Yeah. And I think that's where it changed. You know what I mean? That's where, if I had to look back over it all, that's where it's like, uh, well, where did you guys kind of become like more than just a couple of guys who like knew each other? It's, 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 it's literally the whole behind the scenes Pottoberfest because of Pottoberfest one, because it's, it's literally that it's literally, we were just guys who both listened to the show and both had a similar relative experience with it. And it's like, Oh, you know, because we've interacted with them, they see some skill sets for both of us. And then it's like, let's pull this one in. Let's pull that one in. Let's pull Steph in. Let's pull in uh, the Canadians, you know, whoever I kind of forget to forget the whole roll call, but uh, Gordon Poutine uh, was there. <laughs> yeah. Gordo, Gordo as, as I like to call him. Um, <laughs> Well, it's funny because I I go a step further because mm. that first Podtoberfest, my partner of four of seven years right. left me, mm-hmm. and you were not only was working on Podtoberfest a like a solace, like an escape, but a like distraction. You 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 uh, <laughs> my availability. You actually put up with me like whining about it, like. <laughs> You know what? You know what's funny? For as much as like we spoke, you didn't whine about it. You didn't bring it up much. I see. Don't get me wrong. I think it was a fresh woundish kind of thing. So like when it did come up, we talked about it for a, a length, you know, yeah, a healthy length. Um, because when I got tired of it, you know me, I'll, I'll fucking because we're like that now, where yeah. it's like if I'm tired of whatever we're talking about, I'm like I'm done. Yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> I will just pull the eject button on you. <laughs> um. Which is the last of a railroady kind of uh, being a jerk to you is I think sometimes, but um, yeah, you didn't bring it up that much. I feel like when we talked about it, we did kind of go over it a little bit. But for a guy who like when we did go over it, you know, had some layers to it, like you know, if it probably sh- would have been something that came up more often when you look at the amount of calls. Yeah. Well, we, I think only, only, I mean like that like on a per capita volume type of thing. Like, well, you know what I mean? I, but I'm a workaholic by nature, which you know about me even more now than then. So it was not that hard to pivot. Like I could be like, Hey Bill, how's it going? And then after five minutes of like, Oh, I watched this show or I saw this movie. It's like, uh, Hey, we got to like, we don't have any, we have nine gadgets for the top 10. Like it was not hard for us. It, what happened, what's what I'm curious about as far as like remembering is that first Podtoberfest happens. Like you're there. I'm not, but we don't like, it doesn't stop after that first Podtoberfest. And I don't, I do not, and and you. This is where you co- like your memory comes in. Like I don't remember saying, "Bill, I'll help you with your show," and I don't remember you saying, "Like Palmer, come help me out." I just kind of remember like we moved on to the next thing. Like, well, you always offer to help in such a honest and genuine and like totally like blase. Hey, like it's totally cool. Like if you don't want to weigh without even like that, you were offering to help. Okay. 
I don't, back in the day. I mean, you I don't d- remember me resisting? You don't remember me resisting? I remember, look. Not with the launch, but like when it was running for a while and it was I, like. You, I know you've resisted a lot of things, Bill. I just kind of <laughs> keep going. Like, you, you're right, you don't remember it all. Your, your resistance is the immovable object that I just keep hurling myself into and occasionally I somehow get through. Like. That's, yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Um, but that's the thing, right? That's. I think that's how that started. I think it was very much you offering to help out. You know what I mean? And because you could see stuff on the backside only because we would have conversations about the show. This is true. So you would offer it as a genuine like, oh, well, you know what you could do? You could be doing this, that, the other. I would probably shoot it down because I would see it as more work. And you'd be like, well, I could do it for you. It's not a big deal. It's not hard to do. I could listen live and take notes. Then you don't have to write a, you don't have to write a description of your episodes anymore, Bill, because I'll just have it all done for you by the end of the episode. Well, and I, I was mean, like, well, and, and, well, am I going to say no to that? that well, that, but, I mean, that's, that's, that's another step. Like, but it's stuff like that. Okay. But, but I feel like that's, the, that's maybe like a larger step, but there are smaller, much more incremental steps that kind of happen out of us talking all the time with you just kind of being a guy who offered to help. You know what I mean? So is it, and because, and you were offering to help because a, like, you know, we were, we were getting along, uh, but B like you were, you know, you were into this fucking scene, you know, the, 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 the podcasting stuff of it all, you know, in the grand Royal sense, uh, uh, you know what I mean? So it was like, uh, hey, I'm eager. I got time. I can do it. You know what I mean? This all seems like nothing to me. So, uh, but I can't remember like, exactly where like it started. But I do remember like being like, no, no, I, 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 I got it on a, on a bunch of things early on. Not that they were heavy lifting for you, but it was just like my own guilty conscience of like how much work I should be doing myself that I knew I could do if I applied myself. You know, I didn't want to, like, I wasn't comfortable with doling out, uh, I wasn't comfortable delegating even small things in the beginning. I think that's the answer to the question, how did we become friends, is because <laughs> at, when you, st- like, and it, I, I still remember, you did a live episode for episode 50, mm-hmm. but around episode 46, 47, you started actually I don't want to use this word, but it's the only word I've got collaborating with me on some mm-hmm. wicked theory stuff. Now it wasn't like we, we hadn't even gotten to the cog in the machine joke and the remote right. assistant produce. Like we hadn't even gotten there yet, but yeah. I think that's when we became friends because that show and even in all the incarnations that, and I, I hate to say you, but like that we kind of tried after mm-hmm. um, towards you know, what is now the end. Um, Mm -hmm. That was such a personal show. Like, yes, you shared the mic with three other people or two other people or four other people, depending. But like when you started bringing me on the inside, like, because it was your baby, you don't, I mean, yeah, I, I, you know, you, for, for a creative person, um, you don't invite, any just anybody in right. to your circle to be like all right this is this is my ship you can drive it for a little bit like that was when i knew mm-hmm. and 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 what's funny is that happens before we were trapped in a metal box together for like 14 hours well that sounds much more interesting than what really happened <laughs> we were trapped in a shipping container for 14 hours we were trying to travel cheap and uh, no, it was just us and like just Furbies, like re- Furby uh, re- recall. <laughs> just hundreds of Furbies. I don't even know what they do, but they make noise. I, yeah. um, no, just, but I see. Well, I would say that that's interesting that you say it's there. I think it's bef- I think it's one of those things where we became friends without like actually having like a specific moment or time to me it's like it happened in a gradual way where it was you know like and that's why i say it started i feel like it started way earlier because i know if i have to look back and pick a point like for me like and how i i guess bond with people it seems like to me like i let you into my world in my head early on and if anything 
I guess like after Podtoberfest, where like you when you point out they're like, oh well, we kept on talking all the time anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah the phone calls didn't really stop. Yeah, Podtoberfest. <laughs> yeah, the first Podtoberfest happens, and then- like the reason to get all the calls, your reason, quote unquote, to be calling me all the time <laughs> originally yep. was because of the work on Podtoberfest. Absolutely. But several of those calls would also be like, oh hey, you know what I was just thinking, and it'd be something like. I don't yes, know. I'm I, just un, unrelated to podcasting. I, I will say this uh, right now, and I'll probably say it a few times um, before this is out. The conversations you and I have when we're not working on something could mm. be recorded and a podcast onto themselves. Yeah, because I we know. Are both, people say that. We are both those people, but I like I. It's a personality thing mm-hmm. it, it, because while you are comfortable being like, no, I'm out, right. I'm still comfortable cutting you off, which you <laughs> absolutely hate, but That's like, my you, worst don't, things, yeah. you don't hang up. Like, you know what I mean? Like we still, well, yeah, yeah. there's still a give and take there, but like, uh, there's a real honesty and it developed during that pot, that, that first Podtoberfest, mm-hmm. um, so I, I can see where it would have happened earlier. I just, I picking up the phone. I didn't re at that time. I didn't realize you picking up the phone was such a big deal. Well, the continued <laughs> picking up the phone. That's fair. like, you, you know what I mean? Like, um, and it's not even like that for when friends do call. Like I answer the phone for, for people when they call. Um, yeah, but you didn't have to answer the second time I called that day. No, but I also could have like, if, if, if I had like found you annoying or something like that, or, um, uh, for some reason it was like, all right, look, we worked like on the Podtoberfest thing. So like this guy's got to dial it back. Like, um, like, I don't even know what the, how the hell do you even set, do that? Like, how do you, even, how does, you know, like, dude, you got to cut down. Actually, I probably could have just come out and said it to you. Cause I had that kind of a friendship with you at that point. Yeah. That kind no. of association. I could have been like, dude, you know, let's dial it back on the, on like 10 phone calls a day. Like a, a, two, two, well, three, the, you know, the internet, save it, save it for us. when, save it for when you got something good, buddy. All right. Well, that's, Make sure these calls. <laughs> that's the thing, right? It could have been, we could have used the internet for good there. Or it's like, Hey Bill, I put a pitch in the thing and that could just be a text. I used to call you and be like, Bill, I got an idea. Like yeah. I was, Lots of ideas. I don't, <laughs> so many ideas. Bro, you, you came at me with so many things that like, you know, segments, some bits, some just like his, like half an idea. Like, what do you got? What is that? What are the, cause, cause you keyed into my sensibilities really quick. That's another thing too, I think in a way where, which was, which is a thing I do dig about being, having you as a friend is that like, Oh, this guy kind of does has figured me out <laughs> a little bit as far as like my, where my sense of humor lies or where my head kind of goes. But, um, it did take you a while to get there. So you did pitch me like a lot of stuff, yeah. but they were all like close, but not exactly it. And then, you know, you know, that was always the thing about me. Like, Oh, I wanted more from my show, but like, I don't know what that was about where like, uh, you know, cause even the guys in the show were like offered to do more. And like, uh, yeah, I kind of like, what would like, I don't know. I, I, I want to say that it, I don't mind other people's ideas, but the pattern that wouldn't show that <laughs> like, you know, it's, it would seem like, nah, you don't want nobody's help. Like, you know what I mean? Like I wouldn't have been surprised if you had called me out on that. Now that I think about it, like back in those days and been like, you know, dude, I, I keep on offering <laughs> to suggest stuff. <laughs> we actually, you know what? You're so fucking meta sometimes that I bet you, we did have a conversation about I'm that. I'm sure like, that's- it, where it might've been for you. Like, Hey, am I, am I hitting you with too much? Is it like, you know, cause you do ask me that stuff. Like, you know, do you want me to do this? Should I not yeah, call? That's, uh, sir, you know? So, so right now, the most recent version of that was mm. bill. You're not podcasting. And for a while, right. right. For a while it was bill. When you're going to, when you're going to start recording the show again, like when, yeah, when you, yeah, when you're kicking yeah. it back up. And at a certain point I was like, bill, I'm going to, I'm going to dial it back and just, is it all right if I just ask you once a month? Cause I feel like you're just, 
like I don't need to ask you every day anymore. Yeah, I've allowed. I, I I've set it up with you where it's like, hey, sometimes you know what? I need reminders and or prodding. So yes. don't worry about like asking me that stuff. But you don't or, have don't to- give me a nudge because you know it's uh, it's still up to me whether I do it or not. You're not coming at it like a. You're like a you're like a I'm like a Microsoft kind of like app that kind of is like reminding you of certain things like you know what I mean like you were kind of just like hey I'm just Clippy I'm just coming in like are you sure you want to write that you know what I mean or <laughs> hey just a reminder you know what I mean uh, no harm no foul do what you want just a reminder um, and so at a certain point with those reminders and things you have said uh, do you want me to stop you check back in yeah. like you know what I mean it's like okay I've been asking you this for three months do you want me to keep asking you. So I, I want to talk about that second Podtoberfest because if we become friends before the second Podtoberfest, it's still a scenario where we've only met once before that second Podtoberfest. And that mm-hmm. was because you brought your entire podcast <laughs> to my house. Our one and only remote recording. That's true. Yeah. That's true. You should feel fucking honored. <laughs> that was the first time we met, though, as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when the second pod... T- I, I don't know if you want to dive... like Because that was a thing where it was you and the guys came. Sure. It wasn't just yeah. you. But yeah. like the ideas for the second pod Toberfest start coming around. And Grant is... Uh, I'm going to say... A, a, he's banging the drum. Like... Palmer's oh, sure. coming here. You are not right. remoting this <laughs> right. year. Everybody's yeah. coming. Yes. And yes. I don't, I said I wasn't going to fly. I don't, did I ask you, did like, did, was I like, Bill, do you want to drive with me? Like, I don't remember how, I just know that at a certain point you agreed to drive <laughs> <laughs> to come with me because you don't drive to be but, the to be the passenger. Yeah, I don't. But do you remember any of that part? Not really. But I'm sure we talked it out, the logic of it, well, and for whatever reason, that must have been the more logical or just plain interesting thing to well, do. Well, see, because 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 ultimately, I'm only an hour and a half away from you. Yes, by uh, by drive here in Pennsylvania. I'm yep. in Staten Island, New York. Um, so it's kind of felt like, oh, well, if we drove, you would just be able to come scoop me up and then we hit the road. You know what I mean? And you put you put pressure on me, though, because mm. however we agreed that you would come with me, mm-hmm. all of my like machinations about like maybe I won't show up are gone. I don't have I can't. It's not right. that I can't show up now. Like I can't. Right. Whatever. It's that. I'm right. I'm Bill's transportation now. So now Podtoberfest is not hinging on, well, they can do without Palmer. It's, well, they can't do without Palmer and Bill because at the, the what's, second what's year your, we were so integral. It was like, oh. What you're not clarifying for people is the fact that you hemmed and hawed about going. Period, the end, uh, yes. Period, the end. And it wasn't about like, oh, I don't like those people. It was about like, the 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 it was, home body well um th- well that was the resistance joke, but it was the, well, it was the travel it was the anxiety travel it was the yes it was there was, it was a, the whole kind of thing I go, this, this is kind of like a nutty thing like just gonna do it yeah and uh like you know uh that's how i feel about like a lot of uh things too like i get like that too where it's like <sighs> like there's a bigger voice in your head that's saying ah man just just, just, just walk away from it. Yeah. Just, 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 you know, like you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to do that. You know, you can, you, you can not do that, you know, which is a voice I'll get in my head. Like, you know, when it's about like any big thing that's too, that, that feels for whatever reason, anxiety makes it feel bigger than me. Yes. Like, you know what I mean? It's like serious life decisions or stuff that like, uh, it shouldn't feel like a serious life decision because other people just do it. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But to me, this, this going to the DMV or this jury duty or some simple fucking thing, like, you know, so I get those anxieties too. So I, when, when we were trying to get to the root of, well, if you're going to go, how are we going to get there? And you were like, kind of like not feeling it. 
it did come to a point where like I was like, well, you have to like lock it in by a certain point because if I'm gonna buy a fucking ticket, yeah, like I I, I kind of got to know, like yep. you know what I mean. So the the nature of it did kind of put a little pressure on you on top of that. I'm glad that you said yes. I'm glad that you just said, fuck it. Like, you know, or gave in to if I was berating you. <laughs> yeah, well, it wasn't just you. Like I had, um, I do not fit like uh, up to the, there were two things uh, up to the point of making the decision for whether you were buying a ticket or coming with me. And then up to right before I went to go get you, I never heard from Grant through and 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 Ginger like mm -hmm. and Jason and um da like everybody you were the only one who wasn't on me like are you going to go get Bill you're you're coming right like we're going to we're this is going to happen like cuz everybody was so nervous which didn't make it any easier for me but like at a certain point you're right I was just like I I f fuck it I'm 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 in like and and I I remembered leaving work and going to get you because, you know, I did that. And then so we could start from my house and go right to Michigan. And then, like, we just kind of got up and went. Like, yeah, it was just. Yeah. It, and, and what's odd. Hey, it was easy. It was easy for me, man. I just got to sit there. I didn't have to drive. You seemed like an okay driver within the first 10 minutes or so. I was like, okay, this guy's not crazy. He's definitely like a 10 and two on the wheel, which, you know, it's good. It's responsible, but it doesn't show a whole lot of confidence in the world. But okay. Yeah. You know. Well, what's funny is. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Well, no, what's funny is like we get up in the morning and we go and it's literally the second time we've met. And there's no, <laughs> we didn't do anything. We, you just got me and we went. Yeah. It's, you, you, you know, know, like it's, it's, it's like yeah. we'd known each other for like 20 years. Like it was just kind of yeah. like, oh yeah, this is an, like, look, first of all, for me inside, it was not just another road trip, but looking back at the things we actually did, it was, it was literally just another road trip. Yeah. Like we just grabbed coffee and we sure. went. Yeah. And Stopped then a lot so I could smoke. Yep. And then, uh, you know, I think it was 14 hours later, we arrived in Michigan. Yeah. Which is probably a lot longer than it needed to be. Cause we stopped so many times for me, but well, I didn't yeah. have smoking in my car. And you, you were saying too, that you were, you were digging the brakes. Oh no. The brakes because were of the definitely... driving, cause the driving, you know, that long is not something that you're, you know, you're accustomed or yeah, no. however it was working. Yeah. 90 minutes was the longest I was. I mean, I could go longer, but 90 minutes was the average for me usually. So yeah, the breaking it up was good, you know? Um, so yeah, we, we get to, uh, the, that we get to the second Podtoberfest and it's, um, I, I hesitate to say this for everyone, but for me, it was just like meeting you for the first time. Like it, it was, there's all these internet people. I've never met them before in my life, but I don't right. feel out of place mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um which i know we never talked about it because the one thing about that drive while we did stop a lot was we were still putting the show together <laughs> right yeah <laughs> you yeah. you weren't driving bill but you had the binder and a notebook open like the <laughs> entire way <laughs> that's true yeah you're right i kind of forgot that we were we were working on it that much on the way up i i, I wonder if we actually got anything done I don't, I mean, we must have, cause the uh, second, it did come out. Like we, it, it, I mean, we pulled it off. I mean, as we sit here <laughs> now, back like on it, we yeah, know we did, we did get our work done, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and also too, like when you said that, uh, you know, it's like, oh, you, we, we grouped up with all these people when we get there and it's like, you know them, but you kind of don't. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of like, because when I went back to school, right? So the initial thing there is like, oh, you're going into a room, you don't know anybody. But then like like by that Friday, yeah, like you've kind of settled in a little bit. Like that first tip of the toe of settling in to like, okay, I know some of these people now. Cause because in that school you were kind of like moving in a pack, you know. Yeah. Um so uh, you know, that's what kind of felt like to me. I I could compare it to in a way where it's like Oh, okay. I kind of, I, I, 
I know all these people a little bit. I got a, I got a good vibe on them coming in the door, which is an unusual thing to kind of have when you quote unquote meet people for the first time. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Oh, you know, there's Paula, uh, you know, I know her from her tweets only really like, you know, and yeah. maybe one or two like group chats, uh, group Skypes, um, you know, then everybody else like to varying degrees, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, it was a little weird for first day or so, but luckily, you know, I had known Grant already from the first visit. So like, you know, yeah, and I think I that, that one of the things that you and I have in common is we, we can put in the, we're not afraid to put in the work if we're passionate about it. Sure. Like if it's a thing we want to get done, we're going to do it. And yeah. That first day after we arrived was like, we didn't leave the podcasting room, quote unquote, for like the whole, all I remember about the day prior to going live is sitting with notebooks. Yeah. And, we binders were with, and just like, yeah, we were sitting with notebooks and we were making, uh, not copies, but we were kind of fine. We were finalizing a bunch of things and kind of going over stuff and we went late with it. If yeah, I remember correctly, we, I don't know why that I can't remember what we were doing no, for all of those hours no, that we were like really crunching. What, I just remember that we were crunching. No, we were it like, was, it was go, go, go from like, I don't know, eight o'clock in the morning until like one, one AM. And then it's like, well, we got to be live in six hours. Like we got to guess, stop. I guess, I guess we're done. And it's like, and then conversely, it's like how much of that stuff even got used, of course on air or whatever. But like, and for all the work, quote unquote, that we put in, like, you know, it's like, why were we still fucking doing shit at the last minute? Yeah, why? We, we should have had that. We, <laughs> like, we, think we, about it. Think about how much time, like, how many meetings and conversations, but still at the very end, we were, like, doing that shit for well, hours. think about it this it's way. crazy. It was literally, like, 24 hours. We had 14 mm -hmm. hours in the car where all mm -hmm. we were doing was talking about it. And then the day before, we've got another 12 hours we could have we could have done but, but nothing. also two months but also like two months before well, that well, we could have done nothing for two months we probably could have done all of that work in those 24 hours like we're yeah. not those people like we're gonna talk about it well i am like the worst when it comes to like um i do my projects for school the day before you know what i mean that kind of or the morning of but i think you know everybody's I mean? uh, to an extent everybody's sure, done sure. that but sure and i think there was a certain amount of volume of figuring things out for a lot of those hours now that i'm thinking about it too I it's like like we had lists and things like that like we had a lot of go to small things that had to kind of be filled out like the rest of them like you know it was like oh if we were doing a list it's like do we have enough like we only have like seven or eight or like you know what is this bit what is this thing we have set up you know what i mean so i think there was a lot of like dotting the t's and crossing their eyes but there was probably that on every single item and you know I, what I mean, I, I know that, um, and it, it was talked about on episode 10 of this show when Paula was on that you and I had, <laughs> I don't want to call it like a boys club, but you and I had, it, it was not just a friendship at that point. You and I had a quote unquote partnership is what I'll call it. Cause you mm. and I could work together and Paula mm -hmm. was like, well, you guys weren't open. And I was like, well, we, we weren't, but we had a, we had a process down. And I, our I, problem was that we are actually already had a shorthand. And so it would definitely be a thing where like, ah, we got that. We'll take care of that. Or we did that already. Or like, you know what I mean? So it was like, they were like, Hey, we're here to help too. like hand us stuff. Like, you know what I mean? And I guess in the end we weren't really handing them work no, to do. No, we were and then just, in the end, and then in the end it was like, Oh, we agreed that we would handle like each because each thing would come in and it would just internally feel like for me and then for you probably too, that like, Oh, I know exactly what that thing is or what that needs to be. I got it. I'll handle it. No big deal. It's 10 minutes worth of work. And so that list probably was just so big by the end that that's probably why we brought fucking work to the last minute. Well, and it was also like an, it was an East coast bias of a sort because you and I had, you know what I mean? Like at the time, you know, we were both single. We, we're, mm -hmm. we're, we, we have all, you know, all night, you know, whatever, yeah. like everybody else was either out West or whatever. Like we, we had our thing down and it's for us, like in hindsight, it's just a continuation of the pitch meetings, quote unquote, like the yeah. regular, like the, cause, cause, 
I'm sure at some point I pitched yeah. you other shows too. Yeah. Um, in general, like the work that we were doing, like mm. in me pitching you ideas for Podtoverus, it's no oh, different right, right. than before that yeah. of just being like, Hey Bill, what about this? Hey Bill, what about yeah. that? And our shorthandy kind of thing, like, you know, like is all that it was like, I would hate for anybody to feel like, Oh, you guys were like really boys club and just kind of like excluding the girls or anything. Like, you know what I mean? Because no, we excluded everybody. Because <laughs> We exclude A, we exclude everybody. <laughs> and B, all those people, the ladies especially, can all fucking hang. Yeah. They all got, you know, they don't take any shit. So they're all fucking funny. And they've all got great ideas. And, you know, they were just looking for direction, you know. And we, had, I think that had come up for us too at a certain point where it was like, somebody must have mentioned it or whatever. Or we just noticed that that, that was happening. And it was like, because it was getting near the end. Uh, or something. I remember it kind of coming up between the two of us uh, where it's like, oh man, well, I guess we're not really handing them stuff or somebody feels like we're not handing them stuff. And um, <laughs> we didn't do much to fix it. Although no. I do remember it was like me, you and Steph uh, yeah. up late kind of, you know, working on that, being the last kind of people chipping away at that. And then from, I mean, that ends and this is the part I remember that ends and we go back and in the car ride on the way back about a halfway through that first day. Cause we split the second, the, the way back into two. Mm. Like, I think I was like, so what are we doing next year? <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, yeah, eh. cause uh, you know, in, in full disclosure, like we've kind of taken a little less and less and, and I haven't even been in it. No. For, yeah. For me bit. too. Um, and I, I think part of it was that we were so burnt out from those two. Yeah, we we, we poorly managed that yes. for ourselves. Looking back on it now, it's everything that we just said. It's yeah. that we 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 had blinders on during the work and and kept on you know, putting ourselves on the list for pe- to do the work and then had it up until the last minute, didn't get a lot of sleep, drove, you know, and it's like, you know, um, the whole experience is 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 on the moment f- for the both of us. The exp- this whole weekend experience is on the minute we get in the car, right? Like, oh, okay, here we go. You're hanging out with me. I'm hanging out with you. The fucking you know the energy level comes up a little bit because it's like a, uh, you know get to hang out, uh, uh, fucking around, you know, and palsy walsy. And then that just goes for the next three days. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or however long, six months, however long we were there. You know what I mean? But like, you know, so by the end of it, you know, because of the car trip more than anything, probably me and you are feeling kind of, you know, okay, like. I need yeah. a break from this. But, it's like, you know, a cook goes home and I don't think they all want to cook as soon as they get home. You know what I mean? But how do we get to mm. yeah, uh, let's move it along. cog in the machine, Palmer? Because it's after that second Podtoberfest that I really start to become a part of the Wicked Theory podcast. Because, I, I, I mean, I was around. Yeah. But I feel like it was after that that I became a part of it. Because that first episode back... I was on and we talked about the road trip and we yeah, talked sure. about Podtoberfest. And from that point on, I'm, I'm, I hesitate to say the loudest, but I'm one of the loudest in the chat. Mm-hmm. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm basically moderating the chat. In, well, this in, all starts too. your involvement with this, with wicked theory starts with you being one of the people that was volunteering to send in emails. <laughs> like as much as it was like, Hey, I'm sending in emails. It was a thing where you, you were like, do you want me to send in emails? And I was like, yes. Yeah. I was like, I, I want to make sure that the emails are coming in. And we had a few emails coming in in the beginning from other people too. But by having, you know, always knowing there's at least one, but because there's always like, you know, we had a minimum of like three, you know, like almost from the jump when, you know, we started kind of like, getting a couple people to listen, you know? And then eventually that went up to like, you know, five or six or seven regular. But, um, yeah, but I you, was the first but, but, one but, but, but that was retired. But you graduated from a person who like, will just say, you know, like I, like it wasn't like a, a formulated bit. It was just that you would send in an email. It would be whatever it is. Yeah. Only when you were like curious and questioning, would you, 
let me know what the email is going to be yeah. beforehand. And then more often near the end, you were constantly telling me what the email is going to be. <laughs> and you were constantly <laughs> like, hey, look, uh, in this week's email, all right, the whole idea is it's going like this, right? And then there's a <laughs> shift. And then, like, uh, you know, like, like taking me through it. <laughs> they went from being, uh, I'm going to send you three questions this week. Uh, the last one's a goof. Uh, you know what I mean? whatever kind of like preambles you would give me like during the week and then got down to like, you were breaking them the fuck down, uh, these kinds of things. But, um, I think at that point too, it was a thing where it was when I retired you from emails, it was a couple of things. It was like, well, you were helping out a little bit, I think. And B, we, we had a lot of emails well, and it was like, and it was like, it was, a, and I was, well, part of my rationale, I remember being that we were getting a decent amount of emails and it was going to be one less. If they, There were other factors, I'm sure. Sure. Which, which, which I'm, I think you were about to allude to. I don't know. No, no. I just, I just like the idea that towards the end, my emails were a way for me to do my own bit on the show. True. Because yes. I, w- I would write emails that you would have to read. <laughs> and it was like, you know what I mean? Right. So it was like, yes. I was like, so you could create a scenario or a scene. <laughs> like, we, we were like your little puppets. Here we go. Here we go. Let's I'm going to start a fight. Let's, oh, let's, let's get it going. That, so, um, you know, and then honestly, the rest is a blur, like from, mm-hmm. from no emails to lot to being in the dock with you guys while the show is going and then writing the show notes at the same time. All of that feels like, well, I just stopped I writing those, emails and then started doing the show notes. I think, like, I think those two might overlap. I think the show notes and being in the doc might overlap because I think that was part of it for me too. Was that like, well, now you're helping out with the show too. Like you don't have to do the email bit anymore. It was like, well, it was like I was giving you two, you had like these two tasks to do. You know what I mean? To do every week or whatever. And it was like, just some weird, like small rationale of like, I don't know. It feels like he's, 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 he's doing this notes thing. It's much more involved. Granted, like, you know, the email can be sent anytime during the week. Like it's not a lot of heavy lifting, but it was a thing where like, I kind of feel like that was part of it. Cause I, I do remember it being like, there was a, like a few reasons to not, that you didn't have to do it anymore. And you know what, you know, if you're cool with it, because I don't remember it being a thing like you felt, well, at least it didn't seem like it. Like you felt like, you know, something was kind of like, oh, I was having fun with that. You know what I mean? You're taking it away. You know what I mean? No, well, at the time I was like, well, Ed can do take up where I'm leaving off. Because at that point, Ed was still, mm. I think I think I got told first. Might have been Ed now that I'm thinking about mm. it. But I always felt like, well, Ed's there. Like I, yeah. I'm kind of yeah. covered. Because Ed and I, in a, at least in email, did similar bits. Um yeah, or or they they were uh, both dialed into the show's personalities very well. Where like you know what I mean? It was like okay, I think I know what you guys work towards. Like you know how to phrase a pop culture goofy question, and and also like you know, Ed is definitely doing like hard shtick. <laughs> like you know what I mean? And, yeah, I and, was definitely doing. But more you were definitely like wall. fun, like just trying to be fun and funny and just. I make still it- take pride in the fact that one of the most talked about episodes you ever did was because of an email question and Bob's answer. Cause that's how we get American tacos, which is, oh, uh, the, I, like, I, look, there were a million questions that I had lined up for that show. Right. Mm. And I just happened to ask is a hot dog, a sandwich, which it, and that's where we get American tacos, which you guys ran with. Yeah. Which ran out to the ground. It was just kind of a, but I think I put a brakes on that too. You, I think I kind of did a moratorium on that did, too. You did. But what I want to let, we, we need to go back because at this point, what we're talking mm. about when I'm kind of helping with it. And at a certain point I was putting news in the dock with everybody else, even sure. though I wasn't on, on mic, but, um, this is the height of everything. This is, I'm calling bill at five 30. And then maybe if I'm not yeah, recording would, that night, oh I'm calling God. again. Um, yep. Hey, I got another idea for the show. Mm-hmm. And it's probably, I want to say at its height, it's at least I if 12 phone calls a week, probably like at least almost to a day, maybe more. I, yes. More. 
<laughs> you said 12. Right? I'm thinking like eight. And then you said 12. And then you said for the week. And I was thinking day. <laughs> <laughs> do you understand like all right like when you reminded me about the the five o'clock phone calls it was like the five o'clock whistle on z100 it's like all right let's uh fucking start the uh we're done with work let's play a cool song you know, kind of like on the dot like and i think i told you i was like you can't call me at 505 515 nope. 530 i i need a fucking hour i don't care what time i get home but you would just kind of have something burbling and you've been chopping at the bit, you know, and well, thinking about a thing and be like, hey, I just want to hit you with something real quick. I did know I'm that like, okay. daytime <laughs> phone calls during the workday were out. Like, yeah. I think if I called you twice yeah. during the workday over the course yeah. of like, that would have been. Yeah, I don't want work calls. I don't want I don't want I'm not that guy. Um, like if I had, if I was dating, I, I would tell my check. I'm like, unless the house is on fire. So I meet Steph for the first time at the second Podtoberfest. And when Steph moves in and you and I had this conversation before Steph moved in, it was like, I don't think you're going to be calling me that often. And I was like, I probably not like the Well, you would, you would imagine so, you, you know, would imagine you would imagine. So. And it has yeah. pared down. Sure. But, but that took a while. The pared down took a while. Yeah. We're still a, f and, and you know what? Mm. The rest of the world has moved to video calls and I, we haven't. We still haven't. <laughs> no, no, no. And I don't think it's that. I don't think the video calls is that pervasive. I, I think. I mean, you do see it more and more. I think it's a little bit more generational. But um, I don't think most people want to be fucking looked at for calls like out of the blue. Like a lot of people are like, if you're gonna Facetime me, you better you better tell me first. <laughs> like you know, I've seen that go around on Twitter. Like you know. <laughs> If you're going to FaceTime me, you better let me know first. And I'm like, you know what? You're absolutely right. Like, you know. But I do like that despite still keeping up the phone calls, like yeah. I will now call you based on your tweets. Like, we, <laughs> does, like we've like we now gotten to a point, and you've called me at least twice in the last six months based on a tweet. And like, everything mm -hmm. all right? Like, it's one mm -hmm. of those things where none of the tweets that prompt a phone call for either of us are like, I'm so sad. Like, it's not like that, <laughs> but we're reading subtext that either right. is or isn't there. And I think yeah. we've, we've been, we've been pretty spot on and that's yeah. how I know it's like, he's in the inner circle. Like we're, we're close enough that like, yeah. even something he's putting out to the public, I can read something into it. I'm not imagining it. Yeah. Well, it's also too. It's like, if anybody's going to a be able to read into it, like it would be one of us. And B, uh, who else is going to do the call, you know? And, but, you know, I, pound for pound, I would say, like, when my my downer tweets go out, they are more downer than yours. But, that, I, have, but I have not put them out in a long time. That's fair. I, I've, there was a point, there was a point, I think I was doing it on Facebook. No, I was doing it on Twitter, where I was just tweeting a number. And that was like, my anxiety level for the day or my like my depression for the day and uh that actually had peaked right before i started the podcast i think or in that time in that zone actually i started doing it before that because i remember my ex asked me what that was about and i explained it to her and i was like if i'm at a 10 like like i'll never tweet a 10 was my idea because <laughs> like because 10 means like I can't take That's it anymore. It. No, yeah. no, no. Ten, 10 was, I'm done. Like oh, okay. I'm, I'm off the roof. Like if you ever saw a 10, you should actually just send police to the house. <laughs> like on a serious note, like just, you know, I, I, I was getting like that once in a while. So like, you know, it was, it was this hard, like, you know, stupid, like restrained call for help in a way, you know what I mean? Kind of thing. Cause it's like, I hate those tweets from other people. And sometimes I like them from other people because it's like an insight into how they're feeling and all that. And it's like, oh, shit, I didn't know. Like, you know, but at the same time, like when I go to do it and I go to like tweet out some like real like I fucking like I hate the world and I hate myself. And I, you know what I mean? Or whatever. Some real like internal vomiting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I can't bring myself to do it because then I, I get this this counter guilt of like 
but you're putting it out into the world for what? Like for performance or something? Or like, you know, it's going to read as that or whatever. Like, you know, and so all this double thing comes through and I, I end up deleting the email, uh, the, the tweet, <laughs> you know, nine times out of ten. So before I get to what would be the standard question, um, I, I want to dive into two little side things real quick. First, okay. you were a big proponent of this show. It seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> I don't know about that anymore. <laughs> but you were one of the few people that I asked the following question to. Mm. When I start my own show, am I Agent Palmer or am I Jason? Now, this is a very weird question to ask you who knew me as Palmer before <laughs> you knew like, because again, I was like, who's Jason? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's the thing. Right. So, right. um, you know, and I, I joke, but it's a serious thing depending on who we're around. Steph will, or will not call me Palmer or Jason. Um, I think for a while when she first moved in, it was a struggle to not just always call me Palmer. Are you more of a Jason than a J? Uh, no, it doesn't. Uh, oh, you're not like, it doesn't. It no, doesn't. I, I don't get phased by it at all, but I do know I still get Palmer from her. But well, well, how about this? When you introduce yourself to people, to new people, Jason, it's Jason. Yeah. yeah. It's always Jason. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cause I'm always bill. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, That's... I feel like, I feel like some people are always Jay. Like, Hey, what's up? I'm Jay. Like, you know what I mean? Okay. Some people are like, Hey, I'm Jay. I'm just curious. And yeah. I'm learning about you. But my question to you is like, if somebody was like, call him, are you calling Palmer or Jason? Like, who am I? Because we've known each other. You know what I mean? Like at a certain point I became Jason and even on Twitter now I'm Jason. Right. So, um, like, am I still Palmer? Because like, you're the one, like not the only, but like, you're one of those friends I have that like didn't know me as Jason first. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 But that's, I think that's a thing where like, I think it goes into that category of, you know, if I met radar from mash, <laughs> you know, I don't even know what the fuck his first name really is, but you know, I'm probably never going to call him that. You know what I mean? Okay. It's like whatever that first name you latch on to somebody with, for whatever reason, it's the same reason why some people call me Sweeney. And they, they never really call me, you know, uh, Bill or whatever. And, you know, I don't know why, but like me and my brothers, we've talked about that. Like we get a lot of that from a lot of our friends and have gotten it through the years. Our last names is one of those, those last names that some people just like to, just to throw. Like, you know what I mean? But, um, um, yeah, I kind of think of it like that. I think. Yeah, like because I because there's no real delineation. It's not like oh your personas are so yeah. <laughs> radically different or something. It, no, it's the same dude. But uh, yeah, I think it's just more like that where it's like you know like you know if I had met you and this was a nickname that everybody called you because it's a nickname you had gotten before I met you. You know what I mean? Yeah, they probably would have latched on there too. And also everybody called you Palmer on. Uh, seven dag where yeah. I first got to know of you and then behind the scenes too. Like if behind the scenes, suddenly you were Jason, 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 like that would have, yeah, that's true. Even on those you know first I mean? few phone calls, it was like, you all right, let's the, take a you, roll call. You, you, you allowed and let the whole world, like you never kind of set any standard for it. Like, you know what I mean? Cause you were cool with it. Yeah. Or you liked the ring of it, or you liked the ring of it plus the anonymity, the slight anonymity it kind of allowed you. So, like, behind the scenes, you know, you were never anything else. You know what I mean? I mean, behind the scenes, I make you call me sir, but we don't have to get into that right no, now. We do. No, 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 no. I mean, I'm just glad I'm not a cog in the machine anymore. Uh, it's... <laughs> Yeah, so that was uh, that was your first uh, semi-producer title because I refused to allow you to be an official producer. <laughs> I was a producer on so many other shows. Bill's like, yeah, you can't have mine. No, no, no. The, the, I, well, also too, I was like, I need a producer. I need a producer in studio. And until yep. you're fucking here physically every week, like doing something, handing me pieces of paper with little scribbles on them. Um, or something. Is that what like, you think you, of producer? No, I'm just fucking. Yeah, I, you know, well, I picture Baba Booey. I picture Baba oh, okay. Booey like right. before, like E, like before, like when B E first landed in there and it was a real radio studio. Okay. <laughs> uh, Bill, why are we still friends? 
Wow. I mean, uh, neither one of us has fucked it up yet. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, when you think about it, why is anybody still friends with the people they're friends with? Either, either one of you is keeping it going because they're the person who reaches out more often and doesn't feel offended that they're the one that reaches out. Because I think that's a thing, too. I think I have had friends that kind of like were reaching out and talking to me all the time. And then like they kind of like, oh, like, well, you, you seem like you don't call me. So I don't know. Like, you know what I mean? And I'm like, I just don't call anybody. Yeah. You know, and I try to explain that to them. I'm like, that's just like my fault. Like, you know. We have mutual that's friends like, that you know, ask me about you. Like it was hard for me in my le- my in, in all my previous relationships with girls with, with women, I should say, uh, adults. Adults. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, that like you know it was a miracle that I was able to stay on top of calling all the time, and it's not because like oh I hate the phone. It's just more of like this thing that like. I'm just not super, super duper cognizant all the, of all the time. Like, you know what I mean? And, and a lot of times too, my anxiety keeps me from calling people. A lot of times I will text people before I call because I always feel like I am bothering somebody or interrupting. Like I, like I almost, except for like you and Ed and cause nine times with you guys, I'm returning your call. <laughs> but like, you know, like I always kind of get this anxiety of like, Oh, I know, I know. Uh, it's probably a bad time. They're going to be doing something, uh, uh, you know, and then if I really have to talk to them and it's not just a, and that, that anxiety that whatever that is, you know, sometimes will keep me from doing that. Hey, I'm just calling for no reason dial, you know, and then I'll I'll text and and then I'll text them. But I mean, that's just my psychosis. So I always think, cause, and, and I got really bad in my last relationship where it was like, there like was like this, kind of like hanging issue of like uh, certain times are better to call than others. And I don't know what the situation, like, you know, uh, not to get into it, but so I did have like with that one, like some anxiety, but it was like, uh, I just don't know if that was a good time to call. Or- and, and, and I mean, we don't have to, we're not going to get it. Like, I'm not going to put you yeah, on yeah. the couch, but like we've, we both have different anxieties. Mm-hmm. So I feel like mm-hmm. that's a, that's a bonding thing in and of itself i think yeah because it's not we don't we don't hide it number one Mm -hmm. we don't share it necessarily like it's not like Mm -hmm. we have the same but it's kind of like but you still do your stuff yeah and i still do mine like we just we you know there's a certain amount of working through it um and and there's a there's a finding a a rhythm to it Mm -hmm. you know um but before i let you go you are responsible for some of the nicest things ever said about me on the internet. Oh, well, I mean, so if you would like to take them back, so now's there's only the two time. nice things written about you on the internet. <laughs> Those two times I said something decent. I, I mean, I, I don't think they're written. Unfortunately, I think it's, well, let's get, this straight. Be- it, let's get this straightened out. Is it about you or about your show? Um, it's not a, okay so then it's not about me the two <laughs> nicest things about me on the internet are you talking about my show and my blog <laughs> actually it's, I my, it's my work ethic you didn't compliment me you complimented my work ethic like oh man that dude just really puts a lot of work into his podcast and he keeps the blog going those are the two nice things you said they aren't about me they're about my work ethic and the two things i put out <laughs> this guy's a mule. Let me tell you, folks, if you ever want a friend to help you who'll just keep on helping you, this is the guy you need. <laughs> I stand by those tweets. <laughs> I stand by those tweets. Those tweets are all genuine and true and not just fluff to, like, you know, give you a shout or promote your uh, show, which I think is great, by the way. Wikipedia defines friendship as a relationship of mutual affection between people. My trusty Funkin' Wagnalls defines it as a mutual regard cherished by kindred minds. Both are accurate, and while the second may be more to my liking, and not just because it's much more poetic, friendship, while it can be defined by definition, is mainly defined by experience. 
Whether you are still, as I am, friends with someone from high school or college, or someone from long ago or more recently, you don't need a definition to know who your friends are. You just know. But how do you know? That's the whole reason for this four-episode series. Perhaps there will be some commonality between my four closest friends, but perhaps I'm the only common theme. No matter the theme, the consistencies, or the aberrations, one thing remains true. These are my friends by any definition. Thanks for listening to The Palmer Files, episode 27. As a reminder, all links are available in the show notes, and now for the official business. The Palmer Files releases every two weeks on Tuesdays. If you are still listening, I encourage you to join the discussion. You can tweet me at Agent Palmer, the show at The Palmer Files, and my friend Bill at Wicked Theory. You can see more of what he's up to at wickedtheory.com as well. You can also see more of my writings and rantings on agentpalmer.com, and all links will be in the show notes. Email can be sent to the show at thepalmerfiles at gmail.com if you have any feedback on this or any previous episode, or if there's a topic or guest you'd like me to consider, or, you know, how you're liking this series. question for me uh yeah 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 yeah. um (laughs) where do you see yourself for the next five years the classic interview question job interview really but well see here's the thing uh as we record this i'm unemployed so if this was an like an actual interview i'd be like here <laughs> well you know i'll it's, since um, it's not an interview interview you know we'll allow for some creative dreaming but i think you know? i look i th- i think as long as i i would love to say that um outside of bills being paid which is like a given like you know i'd hopefully that'll happen um I I think I'd like to still have a passion for something, right? Like I know the blog is, you know, going to be approaching like eight, nine or 10 years soon. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't pay attention to that as much as maybe other people would. It's just, Hey, it's Thursday. Here's the next post, you know? Right. And um, the podcast is every two weeks. And so far I'm still kind of just like, Hey, this is great. I think in five years, I'd like to be passionate about something. If it's still the blog and the podcast, fantastic. I don't have to do anything else, but if it, you know, but it's going to have to be something. I don't know if I can exist without Without these, these kinds of side things. Well, I don't, these outlets, these side outlets, outlets, like, you know what I mean? They're, they're, you know, creative endeavors to a degree, but they are, you know, um, you know, it's not your job. It's not what's got paying your bills. You know, you're talking about having a nine to five job and these things in addition yep. to them. Yep. I, I, although, I mean, I do wonder if, if somebody gave me a nine to five to create a podcast. Right. Um, and, and to, you know, to, I've never had a nine to five that fulfilled the creative itch. Right. So mm. it's possible you know, the shine comes off of the Palmer files because I can, because I've got money to spend. Right. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be, you know, if you came to me tomorrow because you hit the lottery and we're going to, we're going to revamp wicked theory, but we're going to have money to spend on it. That might fulfill that creative itch. And even in a more substantial way, because like there are plenty of things I would love to do with this show or the blog that I just can't. Because I'm I'm working within the environment, you know. I'm working with constraints, um, yeah. and it's not. Look, we we are in a pandemic, but 
I have constraints that are regardless of that, right? Like well, sure. I do have anxieties, but I'm also like, you know, even when I had a nine to five, it's not like I could throw money away. So it's like, all right, I'm, I'm going to be selective. Like it's, I don't miss on books that I review because I spend a lot of time making sure that the 20 bucks I spend on a book is like well spent and it's right. not penny pinching. It's like, well, if you make five mistakes, that's a hundred bucks. That's not unsubstantial. So it's those kind of things where I think I'd be more willing to take a flyer on like a book I may not like or right. a movie I may not like and, and like spend money on them if I could. So there are aspects of that that are missed out, but I think I just, as long as I have the output and I'm, you know, I don't look at numbers anymore. Really. The only reason I look at numbers is, is the feed still active? Like as long as I get one tick in a week, <laughs> then I know the, everything still works. Right. right? right like, right, right. okay. Um, it's got a heartbeat. We, we, we're good. Yes. I, I, cause I've actually in the early days of the blog, there were occasions when it would, the server would go down or a mm. code would break and it would be like, I've had no traffic for four days. Okay. I got to check on the site and it'd be like, all right, all right. So that's why I look for the heartbeat, but I don't actually know what the right. numbers are anymore. And I've been, you know, comfortable where, um, and I know it's the same for you as long as I'm fulfilled when I hit publish. Right. I don't yeah. need people to be like, yeah, that was great. I mean, look, you're one of the, you're one of those people. I'm like, Hey, did you listen to the episode? Did you like it? Like, what did you right. think? But I'm genuinely asking for your feedback, not your affirmation. Yes. And I think sure. that that's one of those it ties into the friendship aspect of it. Like I know I can count on you to be like, didn't sound right. Or, you know, Hey, you, you fucked up. Like I no, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes you take those notes. Sometimes you don't, you know, uh, there's been a couple I offered you for this that, uh, you've chosen not to, uh, you know, follow through with. It's fine. No, it's fine. No, it's fine. Well, it's I deserve that. What we learned in this episode is that I would deserve that before all the ideas <laughs> that you've given me that I've rebuffed, you know? So, and by the way, yes, you should be nervous if in case I ever do win a lottery because things will get turned upside down. 